So, when it comes down to fire lighting, it's pretty easy. There's a lot of different ignition sources. We've gone over all the different fire lays. There's different kinds of tinders. But what about extending your fire? Let's say we made this fire with a bow drill or a hand drill or another non-metal or pre-contact method of fire lighting, even flint and steel. Do you want to do that every time you have to make a fire from then on out? Am I going to wear down my ferro rod? Am I going to run out of my matches? What am I going to end up having happen if I just keep using this stuff for long term? If I'm going from camp to camp, carrying a fire is actually much more reasonable, I would say, uh, depending on the situation you're in. How do you carry a fire? Well, I could just pick up this stick and walk along and drop embers like that all over the place and eventually let it go out because it's not surrounded by enough insulated material and heat. I could try to carry several of those, but that becomes kind of a burden. There's other methods we can use using things like bark, fungi, and even grasses. And we're going to be showing you some of those methods today in this video. Now one of my favorite methods is with fungi. These are all examples of Fomus fomentarius. Some people call it horsehoof mushroom. And although in some books it's called the false tinder fungus, it's actually the true tinder fungus. Chaga, uh, Inatus obliquus, is actually not the true tinder fungus. It's actually traditionally called tinder conch. Uh, in Ojibwe we call it shkedagon. And it's a different, uh, different fungi altogether than this stuff. This is the true tinder fungus from the northern hemisphere. It's a birch. Uh, it's a birch fungus, uh, fungus that grows on the dead, rotted logs of birch family, though it will grow on other trees as well. I've seen it on dead, rotted maples. I've seen it on dead, rotted oak. It will grow on other uh, trees, but it's usually found prevalent on dead, rotted logs of birch. So the cool thing about them is there's different ways to use it for fire lighting. The inner skin, uh, not the pores and not the hard shell, but the inner rind is called amidu or amidou, depending on who you're pronouncing it from. And that is actually a tinder that you can process in different ways. But the way that I'm going to use this today is to carry a coal. It will get hot and start to smolder, and I can carry it along with me very easily. Now, you got to get it at the right time of year. I'm going to let these blue jays scream at me for a while. There's like a flock of four of them right there. This is a very fresh one. It's so fresh that I can squeeze a little bit of water out of it. So that's not really what we're after. And this one... It's so rotted and dried out that I can just crumble it very easily. You can see the rot all through it. And it's just the pores that are left and the rotted shell. Now this can be used in different forms, but it's not the best. What I like is the in-between. It's just starting to die off. It's no longer fresh and wet. What I do is I take my knife and I drill a hole the hard shell and from there on I take a hard stick, a hardwood stick like willow or dogwood, sharpen it in and drive it through. And that becomes my handle that I can then put onto the fire and let the fungus get nice and hot and then use that handle to carry it to the next site. So, another method, some people call it the Apache match or the American Indian match. Uh, I, I've learned amongst a few Apache folk and I've never seen them use this, but uh, it's a good method, so I'm sure they wouldn't complain about being named after them. But, what we do is we take bark, in this situation this is white cedar, Thusha occidentalis, and we just start crushing it up and twisting it, kind of like we do for a, a kindling bundle, and get it nice and fibrous, the more surface area the better. We get quite a bit of it to fill up the center. And this is going to be kind of like rolling a cigar in a sense. Uh, I've never rolled a cigar, so I'm just going by what I've heard. And we're just trying to get this as fibrous as possible. Don't have to really twist it or anything. Just break it up. Get it loose. And again, this is no different than a kindling bundle a flint and steel or a bow drill fire. You get a lot of that and put it right in between these two pieces of bark here. Laying, 
it down, gathering more and more of it as we go. Those damp parts don't really want. We just want the nice dry fibrous material. A little bit of dampness is not bad because it'll help slow down the burn. But if it's sopping wet, you're not getting anything. So it's easier to just be selective. If you feel a little bit of dampness, don't get too bent out of shape, but at the same time, don't let it be sopping wet. You got nice and ropey and fibrous. Softer it is, the better. You don't want to use redded basswood or anything like that. It doesn't burn very well. What you're mainly after is soft, fibrous, softwood barks like cedar, juniper will work. Um, some varieties of pine I've used and they do work. Sagebrush bark will work as well if you're out west. I'm just going to move this up close to the top. I've got a good foot and a half here. Add a little bit more near the bottom. You can see how fibrous that gets, how fast it does. That should be enough. And what I'm going to do is roll this in on itself. Not perfectly tight, but not loose. I don't want the fiber to get so much air that it spreads like wildfire. Like that. I've got some lengths of willow bark here. I'm just going to tie off with. Go nice and slow with your plant fibers, especially if you haven't processed them into a rope. You just peel them from a tree. Go nice and slow and steady with them. Don't yank on them like you can with parachute cord or nylon cord, mainly because you're going to break it, almost guaranteed. And I'll go every uh, two hand widths. Like that, two hand widths, make sure this is rolled tight. But not too tight. But what I've made is a tube full of fine material down inside there that has just enough airflow to keep the coals burning and just enough fuel and insulation to keep them hot and burning, but not enough to let them go out. Not anytime soon at least. So what I do then is get a stick, move some of my logs out of the way. Uh, bring a coal out, break this in half, make impromptu tongs, take that, put it inside there as best I can. If you've got several coals, it's better. In fact, I'm going to take that guy out because of how big he is. I'm going to put a few small ones in there first and then put him in as a kind of a plug. Now some will actually roll this with the coals inside the whole tube first. I prefer this method. Uh, this is how I learned it and this is why the main reason I prefer this is I don't have it all burning at once. Unlike my pant legs. If it's all burning at once it's hard to control and it's hard to manipulate. Get in there. Turn you around. Put it down that way, stuff it in, be aware of where coals are going if they're falling. And there we go, and I just carry that along with me. It's going to be a little smoke stack. Or I could take Mr. Schwarzenegger out with me and he can enjoy himself while we're out camping, puffing away on this. So I don't recommend smoking cedar bark. It's, uh, well, the least of your worries is how bad it's going to taste, I'll say that. But that's another coal carrier. 
and it'll work very well and this can burn for several hours if need be and you can always make more as you go along if you have to extend your trip so so we have the fungus smoldering away and it's going to get up into the pores and slowly just kind of smolder up now what's happening there You look here you see these long striations these long lines those are the pores of the fungus and only a little bit of air can get in there so it's not gonna you know erupt into flame like that is right now put that out for a second but it will smolder it will burn for a while this little fungus here can burn for about uh, maybe an hour hour and a half and as you just carry it along with you in your hand like that it's not in the way I wouldn't tie it to anything. Some people are like, you can just tie these to your pack basket or to your backpack. I wouldn't recommend that. You might forget it was there and it might bump up against something that you don't really want to have burnt. But when you get to your site, you just take some kindling, whether it's dry grass or in this situation, cedar bark. And you just put it to each other. You got your fire. Hi there. Say goodbye to my arm here there. There we go. Very easy to light up. Some people call this a fungus lighter or a fungus match. They're just coal carriers. That's all they are. There's a lot of different names for them. Coal carriers is one. So the final one is a traditional Anishinaabe or Ojibwe style of coal carrier. There were some really interesting ones you see throughout the historical record. Uh, the Haudenosaunee or the Iroquois or Six Nations actually had pots made specifically to carry coals in. They would just pack it full of wood ash and then put the coals in the center and carry that pot in a net bag. Uh, what we did as Ojibwe people, we would take a mix of birch bark, grass as an insulator, moss, and some sort of binding material. This could be just sheets of willow bark that you peeled off the tree directly, or it can be processed basswood fiber. Uh, this is the same type of fiber that we were using in the cordage video a couple weeks back. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first use the shell of birch bark. We're gonna insulate that with green grass. You don't wanna have too much dead leaves or anything in it because that'll just, you know, immolate and speed up the process of burning the whole thing. And we want green, fresh grass for that. We want some moss on the inside as our core, and then we'll put the coals inside. So, we got our sheets of birch bark. I'm going to use two for this one. I'm going to lay down some moss oh, and lay down some grass. My mistake there. I'm going to put all of it in at once. I'm just going to put down about two thirds of it for now. Spread that out nice and evenly to be a nice bed. And then I'm going to put my moss in there. I'm going to keep that sheet off to the side. Put this there, this there. I'm just making a nest. Just trying to make a nice little happy nest for coals. I'm going to take my impromptu tongs. I'm going to grab two nice hot coals. And put them in the middle. You see it starts to smolder almost immediately. So we've got to work kind of quick here. We're going to cover that with moss. We don't want to smother it, but we don't want it to burn up. I'm going to take more grass, put that on top. And I'm going to fold over my bark. It's kind of like making a big old messy burrito. I'm going to roll up the bottom first. Check for smoke, make sure it's still smoldering. Roll up the sides, being very careful. It looks like a very bizarre looking cradle board like what we used to carry our kids in. And I'm just going to bring it together as carefully as I can without crushing it. I'm going to fold the top over, like that. And I can feel the heat, 
but not a lot of heat. It's mild, it's not hot. I'm just going to take my cord and wrap, not loose, not tight, just snug. Tie it off up here. And I can do a shoelace knot if need be. And that's all it is. It's going to smolder slowly in there. There's enough cracks in this bark to let air in, but not so much air that it's going to burn up and combust on us. And that'll stay like that for up to two hours, depending on the type of coals. If I have nice hardwood coals like maple and oak and ash, they will stay like that for quite a while. The, the moss inside is just dry enough to be an extra fuel source while at the same time remaining dry and warm. The grass is acting like an insulator to make sure it doesn't get too much air at once, but also making sure it doesn't burn up too quick. There's only a little bit of smoke. I can just barely see it coming out the ends. But it is definitely smoldering away in there nice and hot. Well, nice and warm. We're not going to say hot because hot means the whole thing goes up. And I can carry that along as a package. I can make a cord and hang it uh, like a shoulder strap on me. And I can keep that against my body and feel the warmth. As soon as I feel this getting hot or I start really smelling thick grass smoke, I know that it's ready to burn and it's time to transfer and make a new fire and start up again. As you can see, these are each smoldering away nice and slow. This has only gone down by about an inch since it started. This just has been going for about oh, five minutes. This has been going for about 30. This has been going for about 20. And you can see coal carrying is actually, there's a lot of options available. They're very easy to do. It's not a lot of work to do. This is not rocket science. You just got to learn how to mix your air to fuel to heat ratio properly. You always need that fire triangle heat fuel and air but when you play with it and dabble with it and experiment with it there's a lot you can do if you want to try it at home and you don't have a lot of this natural material get an old bean can or soup can punch a couple of small holes at the bottom fill it full of wood ash plop some coals in there and time it actually sit there well not sit there it gets kind of boring but have a timer check on it every five minutes see how the coals are doing and check the time and just keep on checking on it, see how long it burns before it goes to ash same thing with these you have to play with them to understand them there is one impromptu one you can do. It's not going to last forever. It's not going to burn for long. But you can just take a cattail head from this past winter or this past season that hasn't opened up and stick it, just the tip of it, just the end, into the heat of the fire. I like to do it to several of them, two or three. Let them smolder for a minute and then carry them along and see what happens to them. They usually go for about, I'd say 15 minutes tops, is as long as I've seen the cattail ones. I've heard people doing them for longer. I've not had that luck yet, uh, regardless of the time of year. But once they got a nice heat going, that compact group of fibers that are the seeds and the fluff can smolder for quite a while. And if you've got two or three of them together, You increase your odds of success. When you have multiple means of carrying your embers, you have less chance of failure. Just like having multiple methods of fire lighting, you should have multiple methods of coal carrying in your mental toolkit. Your mental toolkit is more important than your physical toolkit. The more you know, the less you carry, as Morris is famously quoted for saying. But coal carriers are an easy way to get to the next fire. If you're worried about having your fire go out in the middle of the night, having one of these in your shelter, preferably not against the wall of your shelter by any means, but having these nearby so you can carry a coal if you're worried about the fire going out in the night, this is an easy way to make sure that you have some form of fire in the morning. You can extrapolate this and decide if you want to be able to make a big fire for the night that you don't necessarily need but you don't want to have to start it up, up in the morning again. You can mound up all that ash from your fire onto the coals and that'll help insulate it for the night so that the next morning you just got to push the ash back and blow gently with some fibers of some sort of kindling on top and some coals will still be burning in the morning. I've done that two days later and the fire will still get lit without ever having to pull out a bic, a match or any kind of traditional non-metal fire lighter. So 
experiment with them, play with them, get to know your materials. Uh, and again, experimentation, practice, practice, practice. My name is Caleb Musgrave from Canadian Bushcraft. Thank you for watching.